Welcome to day two. Today on the show we're looking at basically the structure of an Angular CLI project, what goes where, and then how things get loaded with System.js, and then finally we're going to talk about creating our first component, and in fact our first component tree, and how components hang together in the Angular app. It's going to be ace. Let's code it. All right, team, welcome to day two. Thanks again for joining us. Today we're talking about three big ideas. The first is where things go in an Angular CLI project. Uh, the second is how things load using System.js. And the final one is just talking about component trees and how the bits of an Angular app hang together. So where we left our story yesterday was that we had generated our template application. We'd use an ng new and given it the name of project here, in our case, which was twit ng, and we generated this directory full of stuff. So let's just open that stuff up in code and, and, and give you a bit of a lay of the land of what goes in an Angular CLI uh, template application, which does follow a best practice set of uh, ideas and layouts. So let's just pump this up so you can see what's happening. Great, to give you a lay of the land, uh, first of all, our source directory, which is where the all of the app action happens. Really source app is where all the good stuff goes down and we're gonna be looking at that in, in more detail over the rest of this course. Public is used for any static assets that you have. So these are copied directly to the dist directory, which is, if you like, a target directory in Maven, same kind of deal. So this is where your compiled assets get copied to. So the compiled stuff from source along with the static stuff from public is all gonna end up in here. So public is good for images or sound or video or other stuff that you wanna statically mix with your more dynamic application. Node modules we learned about yesterday, which is where all our dependencies get installed. Uh, and now the build system looks after copying the relevant bits of this into dist. So you see in, for instance, dist vendor, you can see a bunch of our runtime dependencies get copied there. And we'll talk later about how that happens. E to E is for the end-to-end -end testing. So if you've ever done Selenium integration testing in Java land, this is kind of where those kind of tests live. Uh, interestingly enough, the test files themselves for unit tests uh, live alongside the app component. So these spec files here and uh, the standard way people do this in Angular apps is they co-locate the test with the actual uh, source. So kind of interesting, different for us, so interesting. Uh, the temp directory is where a bunch of compiled test output goes and uh, typings is used for the TypeScript uh, uh, type definitions for where you um, work out, like you get your strongly typed completions and all that sort of jazz, it, uh, all the magic happens in there. So our package JSON we talked about yesterday, nothing new here. Uh, our git ignore we get out of the box, which just tells us which files you don't need to check into source control, which is super handy to hap in, uh, happen in a template. And our TS lint, which is kind of cool too. We'll do that later in the series. We'll do some quality checking and make use of some of that sort of stuff. All right, so that's our basic kind of output uh, layout of the directory. So how does everything actually start? Well, let's have a look in our, our source directory here and in our index file, which is a good place to start for these kind of things. And we won't know all the details of this and it'll become clear over the course, uh, the different bits and pieces we'll need to understand. But for now, let's just have a little look. It says it, well, it loads some polyfills uh, which it's going to need for backward compatibility and so and so on to work in older browsers. And then we see this stuff. So this is where this system.js module loader kicks in. Now system.js, I don't know if you've ever written uh, an old school application where you had a bunch of JavaScript dependencies. Uh, say for instance, you had some sort of UI library that was depending on jQuery UI, which was also depending on jQuery and, and you had to manage that dependency tree and get everything in the right order. Well, system.js looks at solving that problem, okay? So it looks at module loading and dependency management so that all the right things get loaded at all the right times and you don't have to do all of the heavy lifting of that. So some pretty hardcore rocket fuel in here. Um, if we were to uh, actually have a look in our system config, this is where some of this information that it's using gets um, it's configured for system.js as well as some shorthand. You'll see, we'll see some of these things uh, later on when we start doing some imports. But what we do know is that once it's finished bootstrapping all of those modules and dependencies, it then kicks off main. So main is where our actual application starts. So again, here's a bunch of dependencies that we're using an import system from. So these are different libraries that we're importing different classes from, and then we're actually kicking it off. Now, the one of interest for us today is app component. So this is actually, this is kind of interesting too. It's it uses, um, Angular's always been designed to live uh, not just in web browsers at the front end, uh, it's been designed to say, well, maybe down the track we want to bootstrap a mobile application using native component tree, or maybe we want to do server-side rendering. Uh, and all of those ideas are in the framework from the get-go. In our case, we're starting a browser dynamic bootstrap, which means we're going to be targeting the web and a standard browser. 
So what happens is once we kick off, we bootstrap our root component. Now this is where our entry point really happens. You can hold down the control key uh, in Visual Studio Code and you can uh, get a preview of where it is or click and it'll take you through to the actual component. So this is our root component, app.component.ts. And this is where our magic happens. You'll notice what we have here is a basic class, which has got in TypeScript, this is the definition of a property. Think of series of getters and setters. So think of get title, set title, all magic happening here. Now, on this particular class, we have what looks like a Java annotation. In TypeScript land, this is known as a decorator, but it functions exactly like an annotation that we're used to. So it applies a whole bunch of metadata to this particular class that can get reflected later on when Angular needs to work out how things hang together. So in our case, we import this component annotation, decorator, let's use the right terms, uh, and then we configure it up with a few things. One is a selector a template, a style, and a module ID. Now we'll ignore the module ID for now. That's just some magic that helps these load in relative paths. But let's have a look at these. These are really important. In our index.html, you'll see we have this magic tag, app root. Now that's not a standard HTML5 tag. That is actually something that Angular has introduced. We have introduced this as our component tag, okay? So in our component, we say the selector or the name of the tag that we're using is app root. We're saying when you hit this selector, then this is the class we want to render and we want to render it such that the component app.component.html is if you like the view, the style URL is app.component.css. And then this is like a backing bean that backs that data. So let's have a look at the HTML file. Here it is. So this is the actual tiny component that we've defined. It has one property called title. Why don't we add a second property, uh, which we'll call um, wonderful property. Actually, why don't we just call it description? Okay, excellent. Now that's saying I these different, uh, these double braces here are showing, oh, showing us curly braces here are showing us that this is to be interpolated. Okay, so we're going to we're going to take this value off the backing beans property, and we're going to put it in place here wherever this is. Alright, so in our TypeScript, we had a title app works, why don't we um, just add our description equals, this is not the greatest app in the world. Now we have our HTML file title and description, and our TypeScript file, which it's two different properties with its two properties. Let's let's run this. We can do an ng serve or even just ngs will do the same trick. And we should be able to see in our component, oh, it doesn't look like I've saved that. I better save that first. We'll see that that's gonna spark up on localhost 4200. And so let's kick it off with localhost 4200. Our app boots app works and this is not the greatest app in the world. So that's a very small enhancement we've done today, very small title and description. But this is a great building block and we're going to build on this tomorrow when we start nesting components inside this app component. So we'll look at trees of components where we'll nest menu components and timeline components inside this app component. So make sure you tune in for that. Tomorrow it's going to be great.